Late at night, a young man walks down a low-lit Paris street. He turns up the collar of his trench coat, rain. Shadows obscure street names and house numbers. He hears footsteps. He casts a glance over his shoulder. Is he being followed? The man ducks into a dark alley. Has he been here once before? If only he could remember. Beneath an awning, the young man flips open his passport, but he doesn't recognize the face in the passport photo. Perhaps the man is in a novel by French author Patrick Modiano. When Patrick Modiano won the Nobel Prize for Literature in 2014, much of the Anglo-American world was confused. They'd never heard of him. But in France, where the first of his dozens of novels was published 50 years ago, Modiano's books are bestsellers. I hated the first book I read by Modiano. It was too vague, it was too inconsequential, but what did I know? In 2014, I was too young to appreciate the reclusive author's work. That's because Modiano writes slim novels about memory, forgetting, and troubled personal histories. You can read one in a single sitting. His critics and fans believe he writes the same book over and over. And Modiano has confirmed it in rare interviews. I am always writing the same book, he said. Modiano's biography is like a sketch that has been smudged by handling, but we can be certain of a few facts. He's written over 30 books since his first in 1968, and he was born not far from Paris in 1945. That's roughly one year after the city was liberated from the Nazis. His mother was a Belgian actress. She had roles in movies made by Continental Films, a Nazi-controlled film company that was established in Paris in 1940. Modiano's father, Albert, he was a businessman who survived World War II and occupied France by collaborating with the Nazis and working the black market. Albert was Jewish. He was arrested during the occupation, but somehow he escaped deportation. He lived under assumed names. In Modiano's Nobel Prize address, the author explained, those who lived in that occupied Paris wanted to forget it very quickly, or at least only remember the day-to-day -day details, the ones which presented the illusion that everyday life was, after all, not so very different from the life they had led in normal times. It was all a bad dream, with vague remorse for having been, in some sense, survivors. But faced with the silence of our parents, we worked it all out as if we had lived it ourselves. Modiano's early books shine a dim light into the dark corners of French history. In those novels, Modiano struggles with the burdens of history, his father's and his country's. In those first few books, they're called the Occupation Trilogy. He had not yet hit upon his signature combination of hypnotic, staccato prose, film noir type atmosphere, and meditations on human memory. His youthful outrage hides his true talents, like a young artist experimenting with graffiti. Now though, there's no one who writes low-lit streets in fog and drizzle as well as Modiano does, nor do they travel through the labyrinth of the mind like he does, turning the streets of Paris into a maze, a metaphor. Modiano writes about collaborators, black market dealers, grifters, pimps and prostitutes, private detectives and burlesque dancers, characters who assume identities and shed them the way fashion models change their clothes. Through his father, Modiano had access to an underworld most people in Paris never saw. In his later books, Modiano writes about Paris's underbelly so subtly that the reader feels like a Parisian on a lunch break, walking the city streets, passing the open door of a shadowy cocktail lounge, and catching a glimpse of crooked characters inside, hearing a patch of treacherous conversation before a scarred bouncer closes the door again. Nearly all of his books are mysteries, but the crime often takes place far off camera, and the trail is so cold that it's practically non-existent. When I began inhaling Modiano novels two years ago, it was like reading a different author, one who spoke to me now. Six years after my first attempt at reading Modiano, I now had large blank spaces in my memory, ordinary but pleasant days lost to time, episodes of pain reduced to outlines as though little more than a tally in a ledger. Strings of events that had led me here or there had turned into knots that I could no longer unravel. A single Modiano novel may not be all that remarkable, but read one after another, his work has an uncanny effect. It accumulates in the reader's mind, creating the sense for the reader of the fading memory itself that Modiano is constantly examining, constantly writing about. Like the characters of Modiano's books, the reader begins asking, have I been here before? Is that the same character or simply someone with the same name? Do I really remember her face, this character? Have I read all this before? Sometimes in his books, a character from another novel will make a cameo or be mentioned in conversation. And this somehow makes Modiano's Paris, his whole world, feel more real. It's as if Modiano's world is not confined 
to the pages between covers, but somehow it extends beyond. It is all connected as though even after the reader closes a Modiano book, the world of the author carries on, continuing forward even without the reader. Each Modiano novel is only a snapshot of a world in constant motion, always forgetting and always moving on. I believe Modiano is reminding readers to stop and remember or try to remember the path we all took to here. Modiano's characters ruminate in a way that's becoming uncommon as the modern world bombards us with ever more distractions. Reading Modiano says, examine your life, pick up some of the loose threads, see where they take you. What has become of some of those specters who pass through our lives captivating us temporarily before disappearing into the darkness of our memory? It's like a bizarre sound in the night that keeps us awake until dawn and we then forget about in a matter of days. Modiano reminds us that time decides which events and persons are essential to the story we tell ourselves. Perhaps we can have some say in the matter too. Modiano does all this with words familiar to a middle school student. A strain of hope runs through each of his books. His characters struggle to, but eventually are able to rescue pieces of the past, memories from oblivion. Sometimes characters may resurrect painful episodes, but something is still being reclaimed. And that, I think, is a kind of victory. In an interview, Patrick Modiano once said, I thought I'd written my books in continuous fashion, in successive periods of forgetfulness, but often the same faces, the same names, the same places, the same sentences, they reoccur from one to another, like the patterns in a tapestry one might have woven when half asleep.